in the business. And we have winner side action between two of the game's truly, truly great players. Racking the balls is Torsten Holman. He is the reigning world nine ball champion, having won that for the second time last year in Doha, 10 years after his first major breakthrough in 03, where he won the world nine ball title as about a 100 to one shot in Cardiff. He's also a three-time world straight pool champion, along with victories in the China Open, the All Japan Open, the Philippine Open. He's a BCA Open nine ball champion, and he has a high run in straight pool of 404 balls. Originally from Fulda, Germany, now living in Jacksonville, Florida, it's the hip man, Toasty, Torsten Holman, breaking off in rack number one against Dynamite Darren Appleton. Winner side match here. You're going to see Torsten back right after this match or shortly after, because at 7 p.m. he will play the nine ball semifinal against young Skyler Woodward, the 19 year old bank pool whiz from Paducah, Kentucky. And that will be coming up at 7 p.m. So please stay with us for that. I know you will. The South Dakota kid, SVB, is waiting for the winner of that semifinal to play for the nine ball championship. Very, very rare miss by Torsten. The table remains open for Darren. He can shoot either group. And he's gonna jump all over those stripes. If Toasty liked them, you know that's the right group. And as we've seen, especially in that last match between Jason and Carlo, you just cannot afford to make a mistake when you have the break in an alternate break short race format. So already, if Darren gets out here, Torsten will have to rely on some type of an Appleton turnover or unforced error to regain the break advantage. CSI rules in effect, of course, here. Call ball in pocket is required. Don't have to call obvious shots. Can't win or lose on the break. Eight on the break with either spot or you could break over, your choice. And the table is always open after the break. And that means that you can shoot a solid into a stripe or a stripe into a solid until the groups become established. The tricky ball here is the black eight but there's a nice gap between the three and the five to shoot it in the side. And I'm sure that's Darren's plan. It looks like the 12 lays pretty nicely to do that. Or he can do it from the, from the uh, 14, it doesn't matter, but right now he'll probably go ahead and pick his spot on the 14. Just wants to come just a little past where the seven ball is. Perfect. And now he has a nice little, probably a little stun shot here or even maybe just a little extra right hand spin off the middle diamond. And just like that, it's gonna be one zero to Dynamite Darren. And he'll have the break here in rack number two. Torsten pounded his fist on the rail when he missed that first shot. He knows uh, how important it is to hold serve, having won the lag. These guys have played each other many, many times. They have 
have great respect for each other, as they should. Darren first came to the USA in 2006, played in the uh, inaugural IPT events back then. So oh, about eight years now, just a little less than eight years, he's been playing professionally on the big tables, having played English eight ball for most of his career over in the UK. And he's already amassed four major championships, including back-to-back -back US Open nine ball titles, a world 10 ball title, and he too is a world nine ball champion. As a matter of fact, he won the year before Torsten won in 2012. He also won that in Doha. Quite a resume for Dynamite Darren in a short period of time. And, um, you know, we've talked a little bit this week about people going into the Hall of Fame. Look at this break. Wow, three, six, nine, ten, five balls on the break. And stripes are not the group to take because you're right there with three solids in the kitchen and the five ball. I think he may leave the six for the last ball. Play the four, seven, five, followed by the six where he's standing and then the eight in the side. That would be my guess. He's gonna go to the five now and that's just as good because now he has the seven to get to the six or the six to get to the seven. About the easiest rack of eight ball you'd ever want to see here. About 35, 40 seconds, including the break and getting your playing cue. But both of these gentlemen, in my opinion, will absolutely be inducted into the BCA Hall of Fame within the next uh, five to seven years. Again, uh, it's, uh, it's an age requirement as well. You must be 40 years old in addition to having the playing credentials. Both of them already have the playing credentials Darren, I uh, believe, uh, just turned 36 years old. And I think Thorsten is probably 34 or 35. And along with them and guys like Mika and Alex, there's a uh, quite a crop of uh, future Hall of Famers actively playing now on our tours. Well, tours isn't really the word, but events. Torsten has to switch the corner balls. Darren reminded him, and if he didn't, I was going to. Got to have a solid one corner and a stripe in the other to make the rack legal. Eight in the middle, that's all that matters. Nine ball's gonna go in for him. Last one rolling, the eight just tapped the nine in. Let's have a look here and see which group appears more favorable. The two and the 12, obviously, are the two balls that will need a little bit of work. There's nobody better in the world at opening up clusters, though, than this man. He, uh, to me, he's the best straight pool player in the world. Schmidt doesn't play much anymore, I think still that Schmidt is probably the best American straight pool player, even though he doesn't play that much. But as far as globally, I think this man is head and shoulders above everybody else right now. But I'll tell you a little something about his opponent, I'm talking straight pool here for just a second while Torsten decides what he wants to do. Darren set a world record this year, well, actually a few months ago uh, in 2013 at the uh, World 14-1 tournament 
and he did something that has never, ever, ever been done before in the history of world straight pool play. And he ran 200 and out in a race to 200 in the semifinals against Francisco Bustamante. He continued his run. Uh, I think he made maybe uh, eight or 12 more balls. And uh, I don't even know if he was really uh, attempting to go much further than that. But 200 and out in a race to 200 in the semifinals of the World 14-1 tournament. I believe the highest ever before that uh, might have been, because uh, races were to 125 or 150 for many, many years in, in, in World Straight Pool competition. It's only been the last four or five years that they've gone to the 200 in the, in the last uh, couple of couple rounds. But I think the record had been 151 or a 153 where someone had taken a couple of fouls and then went 150 and out. But to do it in competition on the biggest stage in the country in the semifinals of a world tournament. You know how good you got to play to run 100 balls? This man ran 200 balls and out. I think that record will stand for a very, very long time. So Torsen's going to move the two here off to six. And he probably will have to play the two next. He'll just bump it towards the pocket, bounce it off the short rail a little bit, if it even need to get there. He may have to get the bridge. I, yeah, he can reach this right-handed. Yeah. Trying to decide whether he needs to go all the way to the uh, head rail and back up for the three. It looks like it's kind of tough to hold the cue ball here unless he goes into the right-hand rail. And he's got to watch the 14. Whew. That, that could have been doomsday. But the great Holman has managed to do what he needed to do. And he holds serve for the first time. He trails in the match two to one and his dynamites break. Darren playing with a predator cue as he has been for quite a, quite a while now. Last year at the uh, West Coast Challenge at California Billiard Club, uh, in the final two events uh, before uh, uh, the relocation of that great pool room, um, Darren swept both the one pocket and the 10 ball division. And then later on in the year last year, he represented uh, the United Kingdom at the World Games and he took down the gold medal. Ball down. And if the eight passes the five, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of problems here. Take the stripes, they all go. If they don't go, he will have to play probably this combination to get started on the 6-3. Uh, Given it a good hard look, it makes me think that the eight is rather snug in the upper right. Not sure that uh, we'll be able to get a good enough view of it to know for sure. We just have to, we'll know by what he starts with. He's planning the whole play from the eight backwards. Now, again, if the eight doesn't go, then he's got to make a plan to either move it or take the solids and somehow be able to get to the five ball. 
and the one lays okay for that. He still doesn't want to play this combination if solids is the choice, but it's fairly uh, it's it's fairly routine, especially with the three ball a little bit off the rail. Yeah, he's called the three ball, and I'm not surprised. So that tells me that the eight is really tight. And this ball was actually a problem ball, the seven. He's going to get rid of that now. It's not that uh, it's got stuff around it. It only has, has the one pocket to go in, and that's the side pocket he's going to play it in. I think that's really why he was maybe pondering it, so possibly the eight does go without too much trouble, and he just wanted to figure out the best way to get to the seven. I would expect the... Uh, Pattern to be six four one five from here. Notice how much time and care he's giving this rack, although it appears very routine. And that's the mark of a true champion. He's got the maturity to be as patient as necessary, even on the simplest of outs, and be 100% committed to the kind of shot he wants to play and the place he wants to put the cue ball. And that is a pretty nice angle. You don't want to hit this with too high a ball and risk it running into the eight. It's maybe a maybe a tip above center. Maybe just a little little bit of right to slide. And he has done exactly what he had predicted to do when he planned the rack from the very beginning. Cue ball never touched another ball. Every one of those stripes is where it was. Well, he drew into the 11 when he played the 7 in the side, but that's how you play winning pool. So Torsten's miss on the opening shot of the opening game has put him in a hole that uh, he's not going to be able to get out of if Darren can break and hold his serve two more times. And Torsten, knowing that he's going to play the nine ball semifinal after this match, um, the point being, if he can get through this match and win, or at least uh, forget about that uh, error in the first rack, it won't be on his mind when he goes to play his nine ball semi with Skyler. ball no okay ball did drop the four eventually did fall it looks like uh, he can take either group because he has shots on either group the three ball is the tough ball for solids and if he takes the stripes he's probably got to start with that uh, 13 in the upper left and I kind of think that's probably going to be his choice the nine's behind the five. Uh, no, that's the one. The nine is up in the upper right. And I definitely like the stripes here just because of the three ball.
The one stripe up here by the racking area is the 15. And I think he would like probably, uh, he may just leave it to the end and make it his key ball just because he's right there in these last two. He can shoot the 14 here, stop, 12 on the side, float down here, and I think he'll play the eight where he's standing. Looks pretty natural to do that. Just want to come right about parallel to the one and the five here. Just kill, just a little kill shot. make the game look so easy it's almost disgusting <laughs> but it's beautiful to watch it really is great to to see the top players in the world playing at this level on a bar table eight ball on a bar table is a tough game because there's not a lot of room now granted both these guys have powerhouse breaks and if you drop two or three or as Darren did he dropped five balls on uh, on his breaks well, that certainly makes the game play almost like nine ball. Darren can really put the heat on Torsten here with a break and run. Because he'll be on the hill and Torsten will have to hold serve twice and win once on Darren's break. That's why that turnover in rack number one was so huge. And Toasty knew it, believe me. Oh, he gave it back. Oh my God. The one thing you can't do. Well, he's got to take the stripes and play the 310, I think, to start. Because if you take solids, how do you make the three? And all the stripes have pockets. The eight has both corner pockets on the left rail once the 10 has gone. The 14 is the ball kind of in the middle of the table. That's the ball that he probably has the most concern about, but it looks like it goes past that four on the left side. He may do something else. I'm, you know, obviously doing a lot of second guessing up here. It's just the way it would look to me. He may, well, if he can get to straight to the 10, he doesn't even have to play the combination, but at least that's the right, that's the right group to play and that's the right ball to start with. I think he would like to probably take the 13 out next. I think this is better for position on the 13 playing the combination. Just got, doesn't want that three to come anywhere near blocking the pocket in the event he has to play the eight there eventually. He'll hit it kind of fat, so the three will come out to the right. That's good. Okay, I think he's going to take the four stripes that are down here by the racking area, and then the 14 in the side will be the key ball before the eight. It just kind of looks pretty natural to do that. So let's see if that's his plan.
you wanted to be straight in on the 15. It's just going to pinch it. Nice shot. Stop shot here. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe back a little bit. So you have a two rail, two rail or a one rail angle at the final stripe off the 11. And again, please notice that the cue ball has gone nowhere near a solid other than the opening combination. It's a little, a little less than desirable, but he can miss the two. Or he'll play it in the corner and just bump the six. Well, there have been no mistakes in this match other than each player has scratched. Well, excuse me, uh, Darren scratched on the break and Torsten missed the 14 ball in his very first shot of the match. So. Since the errors are one to one, that means that advantage back to Torsten because he breaks in the odd number of racks. And now Darren has to pray for help. I mean, it's not to say that if Darren didn't scratch on that break, he did break dry and Torsten might have run out anyway. But the way that 10 3 was laying, uh, having ball in hand to get started made it a lot easier than having to deal with it from wherever the cue ball might have come to rest. this explosion coming here. Great cue ball. Didn't get a big reward for a nice break, but uh, he does have the two in the side to get started. Or possibly, uh, I don't think the 10 passes the eight up here, and I don't think he wants the stripes anyway. But where's the eight gonna go? Left hand side. Depending on the angle, he might be able to move the eight a little bit here by playing the two in the side. I'm not sure if he's got that angle or not. Okay. Seven next. Six probably will be the key ball before the eight in the side. Don't know that there's any reason to try to open it up. He could do it here if he wants to, because he has an insurance ball, and that would be the four. But as any great player will tell you, you if you can avoid if you can avoid having to run into balls, you want, certainly want to. not happy. He wanted to come a little further straight in on the four, straight in on the three, because the three doesn't go this side. He's going to have to kill this and just hold it there for the three. Oops, he knows he blew it. He didn't dig down enough on the cue ball. Now he's got a problem because he's going to have to play the six. That's where he wanted to be. He's got to play the six. And how does he get on the three? The 
does he have the two rail angle off the six. He can miss the nine. It's a question of can he come out of that corner sharp enough and still miss the eight ten. The other option is to come behind the three where his hand is two rails or follow with inside. He tried the inside. He got a little help from the nine but it's covered part of the eight now. got to hurry up and it's not going to because he hit one of the stripes it slowed the cue ball down yeah he's going to have to play the eight off the ten cross side uh, Cameron Bank And if he doesn't make this and Darren runs out, Darren's breaking for the match. Two mistakes in this game already by Torsten. Two position errors, especially the one on the three ball. He's just got to graze the 10 a little bit here. He probably couldn't have asked for a better role to come out of this with leaving Darren only the 13 ball, I think. Now, Darren can play safe. He can graze off the 9-12 here and go behind the 11, and I think that's the shot. But he's looking at where the cue ball would go if he plays the 13. <coughs> Excuse me. He just would have to be really unlucky here to, to back scratch off that stripe. I still, even though it's quite a ways away and it's on the rail, there's still a good, good, good safety here. Graze the nine, come behind the 11. Good shot. And one rail kick in the side here. He's got to call it. Of course, if he plays it in the side, he's going to sell out if he, the game if he misses it. If he elects to just play safety, He'd have to get the cue ball back where it was just a moment ago, but that won't work because the 11 can be made. So he has called it in the left side. And the tough part of this is he's so close to the side rail, it's going to widen out right away. He's got to allow for that. That's not going to get it done.
breaking now for the match. Dynamite Darren Appleton. I bet you Torsten wouldn't make that mistake again in 50 tries, maybe even 100 tries. Losing his cue ball. He actually got started to get into trouble there when he didn't come quite enough, quite far enough for the four ball. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, he had to wind up putting that uh, kill, kill stroke on the four to hold for the three. And he just came up too high with his cue tip. And that started his downfall. So two errors for Torsten, one for Darren, and that's the difference in the match. Nice little tap from the six onto the one there. Now the problem with solids is the four. Stripes are pretty good, but he'll probably have to open with the 13 if he's gonna play the stripes. Of course, by playing stripes, you get a, maybe a little bit easier play to the eight. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if he wants to risk starting with the one ball, though, just because of the four. Doesn't look like there's a real easy path to open it up and then have an insurance ball. bet he'll take his time making up his mind here. The gate only has one pocket right now. It'll have the lower left corner eventually if he takes the stripes. But he is, he's looking to play in the three to open the four from where his tip is. He wants to come into the rail before he hits the four, exactly. And move the four out, no more than a foot. And he will have the five as an insurance ball. two, this will set up well because the four will get him to the one and that's what he's doing. Just bounce straight up the table past the spot right there. Yep. Pull this over to the right a little bit. Well, no, he doesn't. He actually has enough room to float it right down there between the 12 and the 8. At least it looks that way. That's why he wanted the cue ball right above the spot where he had his tip, because then it would have been no question he could just float down to the left of the 8. Now it's going to come close to the 8 if he goes forward. Straight in here, looking at the left side for the eight ball. Because 
You can cheat the pocket here just a little bit and get the cue ball out to get straight in on the eight and the side. Might see the one graze the cushion just a little bit before it goes in. Oh, if he could do that, even better. And game set and matched. Dynamite Darren Appleton. Torsten goes to the one loss side. Darren moves ahead. Two mistakes to one, and that was the difference in the match.